Okay, let's continue the calculation process. And for this one, um, just pulling it all together, as usual, we're trying to consolidate our learning as best possible. So, bringing the pawn through, supporting the pawn here, because if the bishop takes, then obviously this pawn's not going to be supported. So, a simple move order understanding. So, as we've mentioned, underneath the calculation process, there's so many, so many things that you can include within that to help you make an informed decision. The separate entities underneath the calculations um, shouldn't in any way be classed as the be all and end all for your decision making. The calculation process should encompass a wide range of tools, methods, uh, analysis, ev evaluations, etc. So that is the art of calculation. So in this one here, simple captures um, should suffice really. Because if we leave it, it's going to basically have a little bit more control in the centre. You could just bring the bishop here, but then obviously it can come down, but then the knight comes here and looking for an exchange that way. But then they're managing more squares. So I'm going to simply capture the pawn, because it's to our benefit, and just bring the bishop here now, because if we had left it, then they would have won a pawn because the knight would have taken, pawn would have taken, bishop would have taken with a check on our king. So that was a move order understanding that we would have been in a disadvantaged uh, state if we had let that uh, position continue. So that helped with the decision making on that side. And all the while you're thinking of, you know, your candidate uh, moves, but if it's a simple move order thing where you know that you're going to be disadvantaged, you don't really need to jump into your candidate move um, toolbox um, in any serious way. So we could look to maybe get the bishop off and then get the pawn here. We don't mind that at all. Many players will be celebrating that they've got this double pawn thing here and they'll start targeting it. So let's get this knight out. So it's attacking a pawn here. Obviously we're thinking king safety now. So that's the strategy that we're thinking at this moment in time. The opponent potentially might be jumping there. Probably wants to get his knight out before he goes and castles. That's probably what they're thinking. But maybe they should just go and castle first. We're trying to win some tempo just to get our king safe. If, if we're allowed to. Oh, exact move. <laughs> right, so let's just bring our bishop out in readiness for castling. So the longer term benefits now are, at this moment in time, it's been simple in terms of the movements that we've made on the ball because we've got a story to tell for each one of them. What The first bit was a move order thing. Um, we didn't need to delve too deeply into any other toolboxes and the next one was the strategy of king safety at this moment in time there's no major threats coming from our opponent we're looking to get our king safe so that's the that's the simplified way of me dealing with calculation not jumping into anything too heavy if the position warrants it now this queen move has come here so instantly I, my first reaction is well they've gone for a queen move here so are they going queen side castling the king is a little bit airy we can't actually attack it yet but do they lose tempo because they're not gone and castle so if we castle first then they're kind of behind a beat because they're playing as white the queens come here because it wants to challenge this pawn like we said before um they'll, they'll always make a beeline for this pawn because it's unsupported because this pawn can come down it's attacking our knight so we would have to deal with that attack first and then they've got free reign to come down and attack so as soon as we know this our queen can simply move up just to protect the pawn so we'll do that just um just to highlight that our calculation has worked that out. So it looks like a non-move, like, you know, you, you focus here thinking, oh, what, what's he coming down here for? But because we're so used to doing this double pawn thing, opponents do kind of waste their time trying to go and attack it. 
which is good for us because they lose tempo in finding better appropriate positions so now they've queenside castle so we can we can queenside castle ourselves if we want but we're not we're gonna go kingside castling so it's nice touch here his rook is opposite our queen so you can um, bet that this is going to come down anytime soon in fact it's probably going to be their next move because obviously we, we can't take back because his rook will take the queen so position first oh yeah exact move so we could move our queen attack their queen but he still gets the knight anyway because even if we did take so we could move the knight out of the way just bring it back if they take we've got like um 50 million pieces defending so bring in this back here just to support the pawn we've got support here we've got support here we've got support here need to just move the queen off of the line of the rooks attack so that's my my concern but i believe we've got enough pieces here to help sort this situation out so calculation can be a minefield of what should i do next um for me i think a high percentage of the games fall into um, a move order situation once you've kind of understood the sort of patterns of play um for me a high percentage of the games are it's basically a move order because you're understanding that maybe a piece is going to be under attack um so you then have to support it but you want to support it with a positive spin in terms of well okay what can i do next after this particular support situation or if I have to support, is there a way of attacking one of their pieces while I'm supporting? Or do I need to support the piece at all and just let it go and win a tempo by attacking a piece of theirs, preferably a higher piece, because it gives them something to think about. So we've got to move the queen. Um, see, moving the queen here potentially has this rook coming being opposite if we move the queen here he does have nothing but he doesn't have a check on the king and um, we're still x-raying through to their queen that feels quite nice and we're still on their pawn the pawn takes yeah so i think i'm going to move the queen opposite their queen to look to take the pawn off the board if it's still there I mean, it can just take straight off now. We attack, then the bishop takes, we take the queen, takes takes. So again, it's a move order thing. We've looked at our position as best possible, just to say, well, okay, is it safe? So they ha they're going straight forward for it. So let's have a look at the picture. Take with the bishop. Because we're, then we're attacking their bishop. The bishop takes. Bishop's on our rook. We take their queen. They presumably should take back. And does our rook have space to move? No, so we would have to take with the knight. It feels like we're, because we're down a pawn at the moment. It feels like, out positionally, we feel a little bit better after that exchange. Even if we're another pawn down, the movement feels right. So, ah, okay, so they've changed the mind, yeah, because positionally, somehow, it didn't feel right for them, yeah, 
Right, so we can simply just take the bishop off the board. I mean, if the queen takes, queen takes with a check, no problems there. And this is where I would say, generally, artiness would come into play. Because Abby's going, well, if we take, if the knight takes, what do we do? If the queen takes, we exchange. Um, but they're owning this file with the rook. So should we not bring our rook here? So for me, I think bringing the rook here, because of this ownership of the file situation, looking forward. So I'm going to bring the rook here because the rook's owning a file is a, a very basic situation but it's so strong because the opponents got there inadvertently you know and they're owning the file so after all those exchanges then we're scrabbling around trying to own a file with one of our rooks okay so that's a nice touch because the knight's there now the queen can't actually take the bishop well could but it just get taken by the knight so we can take with a check on the king than the knight takes or whatever but got to be mindful that now that we've brought our rook here if this bishop does move the rook can just take our rook for free so we have to do a little bit of jostling first and i think doing something that's going to kind of make them do something they need to think about just bringing the queen here now to attack the king side because the king is home alone and just keeping that simple then we need to generate a movement of the knight moving somehow if they block that off then that's fine we can push this pawn here and then get the knight sitting in the center here because we kind of need to link up the rooks or else this bishop can't move So as you can see, we're looking for position on the board. That's the top of the um, candidate moves for us. It's also the bottom of um, our candidate moves as well. But you have to ascertain which one is a top of the range position and which is a bottom one. And that will help you make... Ooh, interesting. Queen is managing here at the moment, so... Let's get the knight out. So if we go here with the knight, ideas of coming here, so that's going to be improving our position even more so, because I think the temptation will be to just push here, then we can bring the knight. They may just decide, oh, it's time to take this um, bishop off the board now. This pawn is um, still free for the queen. Because the knight is now defending this area. So he could quite easily just take the pawn. Greedy munching. Not really improving their position. We, we are really looking for them to do this type of thing. So then we win some tempo back again. And it all links back to that tempo in a sense. Especially in these types of positions on the board. We've currently got the opponent kind of in defence mode, so I think they're going to branch out and start attacking. Mindful, Knight can take back as a bit of a... Uh, so they would move that first, so that then... We're moving to attack the bishop anyway, this was the cycle that we wanted to go through but we did think they were going to be looking at greedy munching i think they would have done maybe if the knight had gone somewhere else or something like that then they would have then queen taken because the knight was going to be taking this pawn for free but it didn't happen so we're now attacking their piece so we could take with the pawn or we could take with the rook we want the rook to own the file really
Is there anything else that this knight can do? Is it got anything special? Take him with the rook, take him with the pawn, take him with the pawn. We want to own the file. And, well, it's not moving it just yet because we need to get rid of this bishop. Which one is going to be better? The rook, I think, helps us own the file because we can then bring this other rook here supporting and that's a better position for us that's what i'm believing so that's going to help me inform this decision i'm taking with the rook it's obviously got these pawns pushing down here but we can push here maybe it takes queen squeezes down got to be mindful of that So utilizing the holistic calculation process, blending in with the candidate moves, blending in with our own research in terms of, well, we, we like to have rooks on open files. Um, that's their strongest asset. Uh, so he's looking to get rid of our rook from here and getting the pawn here anyway. And also his queen is going to be attacking this pawn. So if we double up, is there anything else that he's planning to do? He's not going to jump here because the pawn will take. It's not could come here, but that's not doesn't feel like anything. So if we do, we've got the queen protecting. We've got the two rooks protecting. So in essence, if he does take, we've got a stronghold on there. But behind there is this pawn. So I think the queen's going to just slide in a little bit. But we can just take the rook off the board. So simple is as simple does double in the rooks now to get ownership of this file and that was our main focal point for this type of maneuver so when you get a plan you've got your strategy yeah the strategy was to own this file as best possible with the rook because in the longer term that's going to benefit us and then from there it's trying to resist that urge to be tunnel visioned on that on that area so this is why recalculation recalculation and now we understand what calculation is it's not just any one set thing it's a combination of all the other concepts that help make that calculation decision then hopefully you come to your best or better ish type of position on the board And as always, I'll say it doesn't mean that I'm winning this. It just gives a story as to how we've developed our pieces to get to this position. So this is where we said we could just continue. And then if the rook takes, then we could take with our queen, because then we're attacking their queen. If the queen takes, then the rook is owning the file. Then this rook is going to come for a back ranker. So then we move the king across. So he's got a better pawn structure on here. But we still do have pawns here. And we, we, I'm sure we could work that. So let's go with that. We'll take. And then we're going to take... So it's all getting simplified now. So at this point, we could actually just take with the pawn to bring the pawns back in line. So I'm actually going to take with the pawn rather than the rook this time. Because we're coming to an end game thing. Might be more beneficial getting them linked, especially as he's got three linked there. So get these up a bit. Get the king in the game. Yep, yeah, like they're doing. Could have got there. I don't want to lose tempo, you see, but if he pushes down, we have to take, 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 yep. It's getting further down. Don't lose tempo, just push this up. So I think maybe farming the king across here. Um what do we do? What do we do? Let's attack the pole. If he wraps down then that's okay get the king across
Yep, let's get it up. Obviously a check on the king. Oh, maybe not. Let's get rid of them. Let's put a check on their king. It's coming over for the palm. Check. Mate. You know, everybody calculates use utilizing some type of methodology um, to develop the calculation like I say uh, underneath there you've got all the different concepts me personally we've got the answer process we've got the candidate maneuvers um, underneath all of those we've got all sorts of different concepts and ideas but to help streamline um, your thoughts so that they're not jumping all over the place um, the answer candidate moves research history you know your experience your evaluations your analysis all of those things come into the calculation process